six foot four, weighing in at 155 pounds, Twinkie, Twinkie Trev. <laughs> Ooh, standing at a whopping six foot four, weighing in at two, no, not two, 155 pounds. Welcome to Trevor Talks Too Much, um, the show where I become a professional wrestler. Uh, I'm your host, Trevor Everts, Master Baker, Mythical Soft Boy, and like I just said, aspiring professional wrestler. Um, today, you guessed it, I spoke to a professional wrestler. <laughs> um, no, I, I spoke to CJ Perry. She is a former WWE superstar, now doing a ton of like stuff with TV and movies and production. She's just in the entertainment industry, doing a lot of really cool stuff. Um, but she's most well known for her time as a as a professional as a professional wrestler in the WWE, WWE superstar. Um, and she was just the greatest. Like so much fun. I I was in the past a big wrestling fan myself. Um, as you'll hear in the episode, I had no cl- I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, no, it's because I never I don't know I never talk about it. Honestly, I didn't even realize that I was that big of a fan until I was sitting like side by like across from CJ talking about it, and she was so nice and so sweet. And then like all these memories just flooded back. Of like when I used to watch wrestling all the time and we both just like talked about like we reminisced about our favorite like storylines, about our favorite wrestlers, their finishing moves and like and like I'm sitting here as a fan like, oh my God, I used to love this guy. And then she's like, oh yeah, he was such a great person because she knows all these people. So then I'm like living vicariously through her like, is this what it's like to like know Randy Orton personally? Like, <laughs> oh my God, just the greatest. <laughs> I it was ew, oh. She was impressed by your knowledge too. Which is really big for me because I thought I was going to make a <laughs> fool of myself. That is so huge for me. Um, no, it was, I mean, genuinely, this has like been one of my favorite episodes. Like, seriously, I, even if you're not a big wrestling fan, like for me, this was just like, I was like transported back to my childhood. Um, uh, yeah, I feel like you literally were in eighth grade again. You were that, that, that presence of yours came through your body. Yeah. And just was like, rattling off everything and she was like totally here for it yeah no i was like a little kid again honestly it was just so much fun the 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 childlike joy in my heart just to be talking about these things with someone who was there like when it was like literally she got introduced like in the height of my interest in wrestling that's when she started and so like she just knew all these people that i used to like scream at on the television like Oh my God, just the greatest. I, I cannot express how much fun that was to just reminisce and think back and talk about all of these wrestling things, which is so funny. I mean, it's so great. I don't know. I've just got a big old grin on my face. I if know. you're listening, you can probably hear it, but I've just been smiling for the last hour. So he literally has. We should just get right into it. Let's like, just get into let's it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Everybody, welcome to the show, CJ Perry. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited. So you are a former WWE superstar, now television star, movies, doing a little bit of everything these days, entertainment-wise, you would say? Yeah, you know, you can't be one trick pony these days. Yeah, no, trust me, I know. (laughs) I'll do anything. Just give me money. I'll do anything, I swear. (laughs) Um... Is there anything else that you're, so you're now on a show on VH1, Surreal Life, right? Yes. Monday at 9 p.m. on VH1. And it's pretty wild. It's eight celebrities living in a house with no doors. No doors? Yeah. Bathrooms? Bathrooms. But cameras in the bathrooms. Cameras in the bathrooms. Yes. Okay. Are there (laughs) doors on the bathrooms? Yeah. Maybe one or two. Okay. Yeah, not That's all good. of them. Yeah, it's it's really crazy. Dennis Rodman's in the house. Oh my god. Yeah, it's crazy. Dennis Rodman, he's insane. Yeah, he is. Yeah, no, he's like I think he might actually be like clinically insane. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dennis Rodman. Um, immediately right off the bat, could never be on that show. I am so bathroom shy. <laughs> oh was, yeah, I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> it was interesting about like even the bathroom stuff because some of the cast members would openly be like, I need to take a dump, you know, and then yeah. some people would be so paranoid and grossed out about anything 
bathroom related. Yeah. So it was just all the opposites. It's definitely a social experiment that yeah. we didn't really know about until afterwards. Um, <laughs> and now they're like, anytime we do media, they're like, yeah, say it's a social experiment. I've eight celebrities living in a house. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, so that makes sense why we always felt like everything was always going wrong. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie magic, right? Yeah. Let's make them as uncomfortable as possible in the house. Exactly. Um, were there any like really crazy? Did you ever feel like when you were shooting it, like you were just ready to leave? Um, at least once or twice a day. I okay, was, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely, going in, I was super anxious. Yeah. Super, super anxious because they take your phone too. Oh. And that was beyond brutal. No, yeah. I can do it. Brutal. Especially like walking in and all, I knew Dennis Rodman immediately. Yeah. And then Tamar Braxton was there. Yeah. But I didn't know who she was. Yeah. And then Manny MUA was there. Okay. Who I did know because yeah. I watch a lot of YouTube. So I was like, oh my God, I love Manny. Thank God he's here. <laughs> yeah. And then no one else I knew. And so I just was getting like really embarrassed because usually Google saves my life. I just, you know, look yeah. them up and then I act all smart and yeah. act like I know all these facts and boom, boom, boom. Yeah. But there I was in it. And so I didn't want to offend anyone because yeah. it's also celebrities and they're yeah. well known in their own right. And I'm feeling really dumb and stupid. So I just kept on like falling over my two feet and tripping or saying super awkward things. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of that. Yeah. Um, I can't. That scares me not having a phone because I've been to yeah. some parties before where it's like, okay, I know people here are like, you know, they're usually content creators, but they're big. Right. And I was like, I don't want to go up to anyone and be like, hey, who are you? And then they're like, oh, I'm this person and I have. 10 million subscribers on YouTube and how do you not know who I am? And then I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'll leave. So I'm like constantly Googling people anytime I'm in those kind of social situations. Yeah, that was that That's was scary. definitely the most challenging. Stormy Daniels showed up and oh um, I didn't know who she was <laughs> at all. And at some point I was able to talk to my husband. He was like, Stormy Daniels is in there? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It was like freaking out. So there was a lot of things th that way that was just put out of your comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also kind of cool because I got to meet Stormy Daniels for who she was yeah. versus like looking at it online and seeing headlines or yeah. August, same what thing, you know, not just seeing the headlines of people's opinions, but seeing who they are for who they really are. And yeah. it was a very different experience, which I'm yeah. Like that's crazy. I mean, I'd, I'd love to meet Dennis Rodman because to yeah. me, Dennis Rodman, you know, plays for the Bulls, good for 25 rebounds a night um, back in the 80s. But who knows? He's probably got a personality other than rebounding the basketball greater than every <laughs> player before him and after him. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah. Dennis, come on the show. <laughs> Let's talk rebounding. <laughs> No, that's so, funny. so your your husband is so you're a former WWE superstar. Mm -hmm. Your husband is also he's now in the AEW though. Yes, right. But he was also in the WWE before. Yes, because I so when we booked you to come on the show and you were coming on, um, and Jamie started sending me research and stuff, um, little things about you. I realized I was like, oh my god, I do know who she is. Because way back when I was watching the WWE lot, I remember when your character first got introduced as. Rusev's like manager, manager yeah. yeah and so I was like oh my god I know I was trying was flashback to like being in my home with my family and and you know hearing Rusev come out and I was like oh, he has a manager now yes. <laughs> what is this gonna do for the story the um, ravishing Russian Lana yeah <laughs> I love it um so I mean wrestling professional wrestling as far as the WWE and the AEW goes while you're all incredible athletes because wrestling gets a lot of hate everyone's like oh my god it's fake Ugh, it's not real it's so annoying I'm like then you do the stunts exactly idiots <laughs> you hit the ropes <laughs> you hit the ropes like you could normal people can't do that like obviously you know there's it's scripted the storylines you know there's stuff going on that's that's written for them and there's characters it's predetermined endings yeah predetermined endings that was hard for me to learn as a kid. Yeah. You know, part I, of me wanted to believe. My parents are very blunt, you know. Mm. They were like, we know that, you know, it's scripted. But, you know, for my parents, it was like, this is a soap opera. Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. It's yeah. a soap opera that resolves its conflict in the ring. Yeah. Yeah. Which so. I love. Yeah, I do too. Because my mom grew up, like, when I was growing up, my mom watched a ton of soap operas. Like, mm. uh, One Life to Live, All My Children. Is that one of them? Yeah. yeah. General, General Hospital. Hospital. Yeah. General Hospital. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god i remember when i would have like days off of school yes. my mom would be like doing laundry and i'd go in and like hang out with my mom while she was watching like general hospital and i would just sit there and be like god what i wouldn't give to be watching spongebob right now <laughs> but then they introduced me to the greatest soap opera of all time yeah wwe yes <laughs> um so yeah it was a it was a big family family event for us we were watching it all the time um but that's so you got to do it with your husband. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I I started off as a professional dancer and yeah. I was a dancer and then was starting to do acting mm-hmm. and I got an audition. I lived out in LA. It was just an audition that I got a tryout and it turned into a six month tryout. And originally I couldn't even go because I was on another job. Yeah. And finally got there and it went for I guess maybe ten callbacks I had. And then they picked twelve of us girls. And there was a worldwide search, 12 yeah. of us girls, and then we tr- um, we were put through this boot camp yeah. because they wanted dancers, actresses, models, and they wanted to see, okay, you have to be athletic. You have to be able to at least be durable enough, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's, and that talk about like, it's so not fake because I, you get crazy bruise like my whole oh, back had welshes and my butt and yeah. everything from just hitting the ropes or hitting the turnbuckle like yeah. your body really eventually gets used to it but at first it's in shock yeah so they took from 12 of us girls they ended up signing us five girls and i was one of the five and then miro my husband at the time he was a rusif yeah <laughs> i met him the first day of development program and they paired us together because he was bulgarian and i grew up in russia and yeah. American television thinks Eastern Europe and Russia is basically Yeah, villain. they sure do. <laughs> There's one thing that American television is known for. It's being geographically inept. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's so, so you actually met on the show. That's yeah. so cute. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. I want to meet the love of my life in the wrestling ring. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so your husband is now on AEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there, you left the WWE. Um, have you had any interest in getting back into wrestling in any way or maybe joining the AEW? I, I'm open to all, everything. Yeah. Like you said, I'll do a lot of things for some money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but right. uh, in general, um, yeah, there's not, I love wrestling. I really fell in love with it. I, when I had that tryout and I felt like my whole life I had been, working towards that moment because yeah. it's the one place that you have to be really athletic to do stuff and is really a- athletic and physically demanding. But at the same time, you're telling stories yeah. and you're in front of a live audience. But at the same time, it's a scripted television show and yeah. it's a competition, but you also might have like a uh, like soap opera angle where you fall in love with someone and yeah. they get married. I mean, I got married <laughs> like three times, you yeah. know, and divorced. So... <laughs> It was really crazy. Um, And I love that. So um, I do miss it. There's a crazy relationship that I developed with our fans of being able to connect with them emotionally. And it's the best adrenaline high I've ever experienced. What was it like being, because you were a bit of a heel there. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, for, yeah, for a while. For those of you that don't know, the wrestling heel is the villain. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> keep up. Keep up with the terms. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what was it like being a heel in the WWE? Was it hard for some fans like to separate like oh, your yeah. character from who you actually are? Oh, my God. For that. sure. For sure. I, I was really lucky because um, my husband is one of the best villains ever out there yeah. I believe and he he just actually played a Russian villain on a new CBS show called East New York oh, really? and That's so awesome. he just like looks like I, you know, we stereotype people in the first 30 seconds that we meet him, um, people. And so he he just has that presence and he commits to it. And yeah. his whole life, his favorite characters that he loved on television and film were all villains. Yeah. And so he really embodied it. So I got really fortunate to have him by my side yeah. to teach me how to be the best villain. And, yeah. you know, there's, there's things that you will say. There's a... F- there is a formula yeah. to provoke an emotional reaction yeah. to make people hate you. And um, that was me. I was the people hating. When there was a heel <laughs> in the W, when I was younger, I would like, when there were villains, I was like, yes. you're the worst. Yes. Why are you doing yes. this? It was mostly Vince McMahon. <laughs> I mean, Vince McMahon is one of the greatest heels of all time. He is. You know, he, he knows, is. he knows how, he knows how to do it. And I, I fell in love with it. I always wanted to play a Russian character on television. Yeah. So it's like I said before, Russians are usually always the bad guy on our, on our television screen and film. Mm-hmm. So I just leaned into it. And 
what I've noticed in wrestling is a lot of people don't want to fully commit to being unliked. They yeah. want to be the cool bad guy. Yeah. You know, they want to be the Thanos, essentially, yeah. because, you know. The Roman Reigns style of bad guy. Yes, yeah. exactly. Versus like, no, boo, USA, yeah. USA. And um, so, yeah, it the the first year that we did the very Russian patriotic um Vladimir Putin, um, yeah. <laughs> Russian flag drop. Yeah. Um, it was insane. People really thought like I was fully Russian. Yeah. And then you would have the occasional fan come on the internet and be like, you were born in Gainesville. And it's like, <laughs> okay, I'm so glad that you know what Wikipedia yeah. is. Congratulations. <laughs> um, and But people are ruthless. Um, still, up until I was on Total Divas, people didn't know I... S- spoke without an accent yeah because wow. i would commit on social media as well yeah yeah and so i would blur the gray line and but that was fun i think the most hate and the hardest hate that i got was um when i got a divorce on screen to my real life husband oh, and yeah. um i married this other man named bobby lashley and um people just would drag me through the mud on social and and in the arenas, but in the arenas, it's like you, you're you happy about it because you're yeah. like, I feel your energy yeah. and you're doing and re- yes, and you're reacting Feed like I want me and more. <laughs> oh my God. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you know that. I love, Thank you. Thank I love right back. That's awesome. Um, but when the pandemic started and we didn't have the fans and we had the Thunderdome with just the screens, that was hard to just get all that hate online. Yeah. Because it was just like, I was just posting a, TikTok dance. I'm just trying to have fun. Yeah. People are like, die. We hate you. You should be fired. You're no. ugly. Yeah. So that was hard because you're already so isolated, you know, yeah. and that's what you're getting. But then I got put through nine tables by Nia Jax, the Samoan <laughs> dragon, and people felt bad for me. <laughs> hey, that's so what it thank takes you. Put me through nine tables. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's crazy. I, I mean, it took me until the eighth grade to realize that it was all staged. (laughs) Um, So for all of you adult wrestling fans out there that are hating people, stop. (laughs) Um, It was a a learning process though for me because I remember I was like, okay, I get it. The matches are predetermined. And then it took me a while to be like, oh, this isn't like, they're actually, these are fake names and these are like, these people are probably very different and they're actually all acting. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I'm trying to think of like my favorite villains. The Rock was a villain at first. The Rock was a villain, yeah. Then then they started cheering for him. And that ha- happens a lot. Yeah. Like Roman Reigns is a perfect example. When he came back, he, um, from taking a break during the pandemic, he fully committed to being a heel. And Vince finally allowed that because yeah. for so long, the whole place was booing him. Yeah. And he was like, no, he's a good guy. Yeah. And um, so it was really cool to just lean into it. But then, you know, he's a badass. And also he's been champion for like two and a half years. Yeah. And so people will start to... Start to cheer for you unless you're telling them that your country is a pathetic village. Yeah. Like I was doing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're a pathetic village. Are you wrong? <laughs> um, no, I, oh, you know who the greatest, the greatest villains are the, the really just evil managers. Paul Heyman. Oh my God. When Paul Heyman yes. was on TV, I just yes. wanted to punch the yes. television. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. I honestly, the memories are just flooding back. Nice. It's like, I'm just starting to remember all nice. these times. I'd like during commercial breaks when my brother and I would just practice wrestling moves <laughs> just on the couch. Like, and my parents would be like, stop, you're going to break your neck. And we're like, but they just did it. <laughs> we can do it. Come yeah. on. <laughs> just let me give my brother the people's elbow for once. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, so you have, did you have some signature moves? I do. What, were, I do, what was your favorite? Um, well, I do, I love the accolade and that's also was known, my husband's finisher move. The and that's when they, clutch? yes, the, the camel, camel clutch. clutch. <laughs> the camel so clutch. that's a good one. But I, I, that's you know, I love the suplex a bitch or two, you yeah. know? Yeah. Body slam, um, drop kick, you know, always, the basics are always good. Yeah. You know, cause then you can do it anywhere. Yeah. Like in theory, I could body slam you right now if I wanted to. You could, I believe you could. Yeah. Definitely um, drop kick you in the face. It's weird that I kind of want you to. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Jamie, just so you know, this is, uh, and for all the people out there, so you got a lot of range of moves, um, and you've got, so the camel clutch is what's called a submission move yes. um, so that's where you're nice. trying to get your opponent to tap out 
Um, and then you've got what I would call, I don't know if there's a technical term, like your pre-finishers. Yeah. Where it's like you've got your moves that aren't just like regular wrestling moves, but they're a little bit, they usually have like a name or something. And then you do those. And then that leads into the finishing move, which is the big one. Like you've got the tombstone pile driver. You've got the people's elbow. You've got the five knuckle shuffle. Oh, I love it when they bring celebrities in. Yeah. That was the best. And then the celebrities are just like, it's usually actors, so they're like really good at acting. And yeah. then like, but then you see them in a ring. It's like, oh, you obviously like have no clue what's going on, like as far as like fighting. And then they're just like flailing extra yeah. hard. That was the best. It's like when Snooki came. Yeah. Wow. Did, she, oh, did she really? That was like 2012. She oh, did WrestleMania. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Logan that. Paul, I was really Logan impressed Paul. with. Yeah, I remember seeing him. He did good, but he yeah. also does like some boxing and yeah, stuff. Yeah, but still, fighting. he moved yeah. like he, I don't know if he was a gymnast or something because I went to SummerSlam and I was it was in Nashville and I went yeah. to the stadium and um, it was Logan Paul's match with um, the Miz and I was like, oh god, this is gonna suck. I already know, yeah. you know, because just because someone box or just yeah. because someone's really athletic doesn't mean they're gonna be able to move well in mm-hmm. the ring. And I was blown away. I was like, whoa, he is has picked up so quickly yeah. and even the way he would do a leapfrog yeah like his toes are pointed and it was really high and yeah. he's just like moves um definitely moves like he had done gymnastics or yeah. done something like his lines were super clean yeah. and um i was really really impressed i saw he posted something doing like a backflip off yeah. the third rope i was like whoa i think he might have he might have done some like gymnastics or stuff because he's always been like pretty pretty even since like his vine days i remember he Mm. would just do like these vines where i don't know he was like on a train and just like did the splits or something like i think he's just he just does that i don't know he does a lot of stuff it seems wait how old were you during vine days were you even like around then (laughs) that has been a really long time like uh (laughs) like seventh eighth grade i think maybe it was when vine was big yeah even before that you must have been like eight no 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 i i remember i definitely remember being in in junior high i I think think it it was right after high school for me okay jamie the vine so we've talked about Vine before on the show, and I yeah. made some like pretty. I mean, I only made a few vines in my day, but they were like very embarrassing. The vine that you showed on this show against my will, yeah. by the way, because it was very embarrassing. <laughs> I do a lot of that. I find things of Trevor that are embarrassing and put them in the YouTube show. <laughs> my friend, so my friend that's Devin, that's in that vine, yeah. and Kathleen, they were over for a wrestling event. Oh, that's like cool. we made that vine like during oh, like a commercial break or something, great. or like we were grabbing food and we made that vine. Um, Anyway, that's funny. So, I'm sure you have some favorite wrestlers. Do you want to go down the list? Do you have Do you have like a top three like favorite wrestlers like uh, all time? All time. All time. Well, I I feel that for me, I would I'm gonna say WWE superstar for okay. for this sake. Even though yeah. I don't like to just put, you know, there could be other people that have worked in Japan or yeah. you know, in other promotions. But I would have I was always really drawn to the characters characters more than yeah. just wrestlers so paul Heyman was one of my favorites oh. and i think that's why i really went after being a manager because yeah. he would drive stories so much with, so with much. on the mic yeah. and i understood like the importance of it yeah. and i was drawn to it and he was so entertaining and stephanie mcmahon stephanie like McMahon. i was mm-hmm. obsessed with stephanie mcmahon because she told s- so many different types of stories, so many yeah. relationship stories. So like the the her passing out in the car um, in Vegas yeah. when I mean I just love that. Maybe it's because I do love drama. Yeah. Like I love good like romantic drama. And um, you know, she also was champion and also Miss Elizabeth. Um, I'm sure you're that yeah. was way before your time. But um so. <laughs> in the eighties, you yeah. know, she was huge with Macho Man. And she just, you know, if you look at um when she was with Macho Man, she came out at WrestleMania and she was such a huge star. Yeah. Huge, huge star. Her own entrance, her own, just so much charisma. And yeah. she was so beautiful. And I feel like coming from Hollywood versus like coming up through the independent yeah. circuit of wrestling, I, I was really drawn to her because I was like, oh my God, you look like this famous actress on a red carpet. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just I I loved her so much, and so I took a lot from these people. Each yeah. and every one of them, I really really studied. But of course, there's, I mean, all the legends I love. You know, I mean, yeah. Undertaker. Um, there's so much to learn from Chris Jericho. I, Chris love, Jericho. I love Chris, Chris Jericho. Jericho. Yeah. He 
He's so great. I, yeah. Down. Yeah. Oh, he's so incredible. He's so good at everything. Like he he's is. so good in the ring. He's so good on the mic. And if he's a bad guy, he's the best bad guy. And yeah. if he's a good guy, he's the best good guy. And he turned he really any is. crowd. So 100%. yeah, I would say besides my husband, um, yeah. well, obviously I don't want to be number one. Yeah. Obviously. I accept that. Um, Chris Jericho would definitely be up there and he's I, been around so long. He has. Yeah. I think he might be up there for me too. I remember like, he is. He's so great on mic. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just perfect. He can just get right up in someone's yeah. face. And he's, like, a great, like, high flyer. Like, he's yeah, so insane. athletic. So athletic. Um, just it's crazy. Does so many huge, yeah. like, huge moves. Jumping out of the ring. Going through tables. Um, I'm trying to think for me. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when uh, what, Royal Rumble 2012, I think they brought back, they had like a bunch, because I love it in the Royal Rumble when they bring back like older stars. Yeah. They had Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Nice. Which was great. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that was just the funniest thing to me as like a seventh grader. Um, Mick Foley was great. Yeah. Oh that my God, I, I love that. Oh, what's his name? No, 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 no. Santino Morello. Oh my gosh, I love Santino. <laughs> he's so funny. He's hilarious. He's the funniest. I, yeah, I, I had love a him. snake. I had a snake like arm thing, and I would put it on like every time there was like a wrestling. Oh, we were watching wrestling. Right. He would get out this like sleeve that like yep. looked like a snake. He'd pull it on his arm, and he would look at someone. He'd go, and then he would just run at them and just poke them. <laughs> that was his move. I love that. He's so funny. He's so funny. Yeah. And not only is he making everyone on who's watching laugh, he also like makes the boys in the ring laugh. Yeah. Like Miro, I think it was a rumble one time he ran in and Miro said he almost, he was popping jokes the whole time that all of them were like turning away from the camera, like cracking up because he was making them all <laughs> laugh that is so, so great. hard. So that's amazing. Oh, I love it. Yeah. He was, he was definitely a favorite. Um, I'm trying to think of like other wrestlers who were really big when I was watching a lot. It was definitely John Cena. It was yeah. definitely, you know. John Cena's amazing. Yeah. Like, I mean, people sometimes don't like John for whatever reasons, but when it comes to like his charisma and his intel, yeah. like he know he's so brilliant. And when it comes to storytelling, oh, yeah. it never ceases to amaze me. And I've seen him go out in crowds where the whole place is booing him or at least 50-50. Yeah. And then by the end of his promo, he has switched the entire like crowd. Everyone yeah. is cheering. Like we're all backstage jumping up for him yeah. as well. And he's just he's just amazing. I learned so much from him when we were working with him in 2015 um, when we were the Big bad Russians. Yeah. <laughs> um, I learned so much. Le learned so much about timing, storytelling. Yeah. And he really gives back. Like he really yeah. gives back to the younger people and just people that he's mm. working with. So I love that. He yeah. seems just like a good dude. Yeah. He he really is yeah. that character. Yeah. Like he's so respectful backstage. Yeah. He watches every match before he's before the the show starts, five minutes, he's we have this viewing area backstage. Yeah. And um and Definitely back in the day, you had to watch be there. Yeah. If not, it was very disrespectful and like yeah. The Undertaker didn't like it and they would have meetings about it. Yeah. And uh, but now it's a lot more relaxed. You know, people don't get hazed as much. You know, yeah. it's a publicly traded company. So yeah. <laughs> it's pretty chill. Um, but John still, he doesn't tell you, he won't tell you you have to be there, but he will lead by example and be there five minutes before it starts and watch every single match. Yeah. Even if he's warming up, he won't leave. He won't yeah. have his phone out. And it's just yeah. like, whoa, like awesome. respect. Yeah. You know? I think when someone is like so like such a cool and like good person, like I think that's why he gets yeah. booed so much is like totally. people are just mad that so many people <laughs> like him. Yes. Like some people feel like everybody likes this guy. Someone has to boo him. Like yeah. he's just that good of a dude. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> totally. Dolph Ziggler. Another, oh, another, love Dolph. Another love great Dolph. one. He was a good like just oh my God. like skeezy bad guy. Oh like, yeah. Like he's just like, he's so cool. Yeah. But he's just like this cool bad guy. Oh, like, he's so good. Yeah. Um, I That was our second big story in 2015. He became my on-screen boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Miro got this blonde girl because I was blonde at the time and yeah. made her dress like me and that was his on <laughs> girlfriend that. Um, that. so that was a lot of fun um but Dolph he's so good like he's yeah. so good at being a good guy or a bad guy he's so athletic oh, um yeah. insanely athletic crazy um and if if Miro was here and you asked him who was his favorite person to work with he 
John and Dolph, Dolph is definitely really high on his list. Yeah. Um, of, and they had some of the best matches I've ever seen because I would be, yeah. you know, right front front row. Yeah, yeah, um, you're right there on the ring. Yeah. yeah, and he's just so good. He's such he's such a good good guy. He really knows how to sell everyone's maneuvers yeah. and you know he get does. sympathy. Yeah, totally. That is one thing that I noticed even like when I was younger watching him. I was like, he is so good at selling something, yeah. looking yes. just like it was the most painful <laughs> move you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, like you'd watch totally. him take a hit, and it was just like. Oh my God! Yeah, like his back just got broken. Yeah, no, like it's insane. He has insane. To have so many broken bones, and then he get right back up, and he's flying off the top rope. Yeah, though, so, he's so good. I, I feel like watching him sell a lot because Miro worked with him for quite some time, yeah. at, especially live events. Yeah, and I just studied him, and I feel he really influenced me a lot when it came to my selling as a baby face. Yeah, which means good guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so I, I. I'm forever thankful for that because he just, he's so, so good. And I think I also connected with the way he moved, especially in the, when he was selling because he was a lot smaller than a lot of of the guys at the time um, because a lot of them are like Miro size at the time. And so I felt compared to a lot of girls when I started wrestling, I was maybe a little bit smaller than like Nia Jax or Rhea or Charlotte. And so you really have to put over that they're strong and they're powerful. And so I always just remember Dolph and John. Like John, even though he might be one of the strongest guys and lift the most, he he will take a flat bump immediately for like a punch to the face, you know? And there's so much to learn from that. I mean, at the end of the day, we're storytellers. So yeah. Even if you are the toughest person in the room, if you're a good guy, you need to be able to sell and get yeah. sympathy. So Yeah. This is the greatest. A lot this... of details on wrestling right now. This is so cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just Don't the apologize. Great, this is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> This is so amazing. Um, you had brought up The Miz, which is funny because I know him. I know him Miz. when he was on The so- Challenge. Because I'm like obsessed with the challenge. And he used to be on the challenge and he would come out as the Miz and be that character like in the house and during the challenges. And then he went on. He like took that into his wrestling career. I mean, now we're talking about I I forgot. I like all these people because I'm thinking all the time is like before I got there. But Mike is one another person like I, I studied him so much of how he does promos. I mean, he's incredible bad guy. Oh, um, yeah. incredible. He could just get any crowd like any around crowd. his finger. So entertaining. So good. And he just always commits like no yeah. matter where he goes. Like yeah. if it's a as, if it's a Jimmy Kimmel or if it's the challenge or if yeah. it's tough enough, um, he's just always commits and often really blurs that gray line, yeah. which is really fun to watch. Um, I love also <laughs> my favorite thing about The Miz is anytime he had a mic, the W was flipped upside down. Oh, yeah. It's so great. <laughs> the W is flipped upside All down. All those things he does, he, it's nothing is by accident with yeah. him. He's doing everything on purpose, and he's just so brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, it, I love The Miz. Um, another one of my favorites, a little bit of like more of a lesser, but like a lesser character. Not lesser. That was mean. That was rude. But someone who wasn't as like a, as big of a superstar, Zack Ryder. Oh, yeah. I Zach love awesome. him so much. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. woo. <laughs> so good. And he was one of the first people that originally were on YouTube from WWE. Yeah. Like he grew his channel like t- like. Back in 2010, yeah, like two million followers, and then yeah. they took his channel. Um, I know. I know. How we, I'm sorry. I just had an epiphany. How have we not talked about Randy Orton yet? Oh my God, I love Randy. I love Randy. <laughs> I Orton. love Randy. What <laughs> a legend! Under the table. <laughs> So good. It's so good. <laughs> Randy's amazing. That, he that is amazing. One of the best finishing moves. Oh yeah, like RKO. of all time. RKO I think out so. of nowhere. I mean, when For you sure. like think about like. How the room would just stop yes. when he hit the mat with an RKO. Like it was just like, poof, yeah. and then everybody would erupt. Yeah. Oh, it was so great. Just uh, like him slamming. Yes. And just yes. getting ready, hunting his prey. Oh my God, I'm fired up. I got to go find my brother and do some wrestling moves. <laughs> <laughs> I got I to gotta find somebody in the office to RKO. <laughs> oh, it's so great. So we've talked about wrestling for a long time, um, and it's been a, a real joy for me. I so can thank tell you. That you love wrestling, and I love thank that. Thank you. I love that for you. This has been amazing. Um, but it, your life obviously encapsulates much more than wrestling. So, what would you say are some of the other like biggest parts of your life? Because you do 
TV, other stuff? Do you have any like favorite hobbies other than throwing people through tables? I feel like my hobbies are all things that I do for my living. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like, um, gosh, I do so many things. I mean, you guys can subscribe to cjperry.com. Yeah. Um, yes. It will also be a lot of entertaining stuff on there as Surreal Life airs because yeah. I'm going to be watching it live for the oh, first. Oh, that's great. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's great. gonna be interesting. <laughs> that is great. So I know, <laughs> um, so I'm gonna be putting it live actually on cjperry.com because I know react, like watching, like reacting to things or watching things back is really popular Big. on pretty much all social platforms. Yeah. So that you can see in real time. Oh God, help me. Um, <laughs> So whew, we're gonna get through it. <sighs> I believe in you. You're oh, strong you. enough. You can do it. I've I've reacted to myself before. Um, I think we did it recently for a video here. They like showed me one of like the first videos I was in, like since I feel? got here, and then I watched it, and I remember just watching, it and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh God, you actually put this on the internet for people to watch. You like people watch this? <laughs> oh my you God! Saw me doing this, <laughs> acting like this. Um, uh, well, they loved it. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I w um, so I'm producing three movies right now um, mm -hmm. and have been for a very long, even prior to WWE, I wanted to start doing more producing yeah. um, because I just feel like it gives you longevity of mm. being a storyteller. So doing that and also going to be directing my first short film. That's amazing. Very Congratulations. Excited. Thank you. Thank you. And it's um, an action comedy. So awesome. I'm very, very excited to basically take everything that I've learned throughout the years and apply it. Yeah. So That's so cool. Yeah. Um, Jamie requested, she really wanted oh, yeah. you <laughs> to give me a wrestling nickname or like give me a wrestling name. Ooh, do I you... feel like we have to do that together. Because that's okay. really personal. I can't just be like, oh, this is yeah, what you are. Yeah, you have to are. give some facts or we some have to, things like, about do it you. Together. Things about me. Yeah. Okay. Generally, uh, I've been told I have like pretty big golden retriever energy sometimes. Um, so I would say that I'm like, I, I'm probably more pretty of a good accurate. guy. <laughs> I'm probably, okay. I wouldn't yeah. be a great villain. But you strive to be, like you always say you want to be the villain. I do want to be a villain. You are very likable. Yeah. Yeah, just naturally likable. Just, well, thank you. <laughs> some people are not. And so I say lean into the villain-esque. Yeah. Um, but you're very, very likable. Yeah. So I, uh, golden retriever energy, I, I agree with you. Yeah. See, yeah. I feel like that's probably why I like Zack Ryder so much totally. when, I was, when I was younger. Because I was like, he's so cool and funny. I love him. He's just like, you know, he's showing up in his sunglasses. He's got yeah. spiked up hair. Um, so, yeah, I feel like I'm more in that realm. Where are you from originally? I'm from Boise, Idaho. Oh, yeah, interesting. The great potato state. Mm. Um, that's a wrestling state. Is it? Yeah. Is there a lot of wrestling there? I would say, like, people love wrestling there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. I mean, definitely. I guess, yeah, I was having people over in my house all the time to watch wrestling, yeah. so somebody's got to love it. Um, you're also stronger than you look. Not to, yeah, not I look really as, noodly. But, like, you're strong. Pretty, like, pretty, pretty noodly. Thank you, Jamie. Thank <laughs> you for calling me strong. <laughs> He's arm wrestled more than one person on this show before. I have. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's true. I have. So you, we could use an adjective of something strong or strong. Like, we could do... Like the ravishing Russian Lana is like the R and the R or the Bulgarian Brut. Okay. Um, we could yeah. do like strong with something. Yeah. Strong. Um, see, strong, you Stephen. Said, you said alliteration. People <laughs> yeah, describe like, me as twinky a lot. Like a twink. <laughs> like I'm very twinky. Twinky Trev. <laughs> That's my wrestling name. <laughs> Twinkie Trump! Oh my god! Oh my goodness! We got it. <laughs> Six foot four, weighing in at one hundred and fifty-five pounds. Twinkie, Twinkie Trump! <laughs> and there's the clip. Oh. <laughs> The sad part is those are my actual measurements. I'm uh, actually six foot four. Oh, you really are six foot four? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's great. I'm a little tall. You could be a professional wrestler. Vince loves Don't tall tell people. me that. <laughs> and you're only will, 23 years old. I will so. leave. <laughs> I swear to God, I will leave. <laughs> I will walk into Rhett and Link's office right now. It is just outside that door. <laughs> if Vince McMahon calls me on the phone... And he wants to put me in the ring. I will do it. 
<laughs> I will oh do god. it. Don't tempt me. Oh my god. I feel like Triple H could definitely hire you for NXT right now. Yeah. Six foot. Yeah. I mean, look, you have a show. I play basketball. I'm athletic. I can jump. Exactly. I. You're charismatic. Look clearly. I can. I. I can. I'll be good on mic. Yeah. Look, I'll Don't get, get people riled up. Yeah. I swear to God, I'll do it. <laughs> Twinkie. <laughs> I love that. Oh, my God. That's going to be um, your name in my phone Oh, my phone God. Now. That's so funny. God dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having this me. This has been just the greatest. Oh, my God. I'm so much so fun. I'm so happy right now. I have so much joy in my heart. <laughs> this has been so great. Um, I know you've already talked about it a little bit, but please plug all of the things. Tell everyone where they can find you, where to follow you, where to do things that involve you. I, that was a weird way of phrasing that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but please tell them. <laughs> you can follow me on all social accounts at the CJ Perry and subscribe to cjperry.com and catch Surreal Life on VH1 at 9 p.m. Nice. Huge. Do all that right now or I'll freaking suplex you right through this table. I'm going to bring you to the studio <laughs> and I'm going to put you through a table if you don't do all of that right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Wow, everyone. What a treat that was. What a treat for me. And I hope for you too. Um, please, though, do go check out all of CJ's stuff. Um, v CJ Perry on socials, uh, cjperry.com. Uh, subscribe over there. And then also check her out on Surreal Life on VH1 on Mondays because um, that's hilarious. Uh, just celebrities living life together with no doors. Um, the range from Dennis Rodman to Frankie Muniz is on that. Yeah, no, that's unreal. I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> I like. I Me gotta too. watch how Dennis. Even just not even other. Cele- I just want to know how Dennis Rodman interacts with people. Yeah, like in like, general. Like what? What is that guy like? I've only seen him drop thirty rebounds on for the, the Chicago Bulls. On the trailer, there's like a clip of Frankie Muniz, and he's just saying like, "We've all seen his." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so please do go check out all the CJ stuff she's amazing what a guest um yeah you don't even have to ask me how that went it was phenomenal you no I tell. don't yeah. no I mean <laughs> I'm I'm about to drop a people's elbow through this table because of how excited I am I mean that would be it. really cool I'm gonna do it I like I, I can't believe <laughs> I'm literally I've never in a pie I, you thought I was bad when I was talking about RuneScape and now you've just seen a whole nother level of like me like now I'm just gonna talk about wrestling all the time so nice little switch up yeah, you're welcome. But I did manage to work RuneScape into it. Um, <laughs> everyone, it's that time again for another useless fact of the week. Unlike uh, the very useful facts that I've given you throughout the the, the time of this episode, uh, all my wrestling facts, those are useful. This is useless. Um, dolphins give each other names, which is actually pretty cool. I don't know if that's useless. I mean, yeah, maybe I that's mean, a good piece of knowledge yeah. to have. <laughs> um, but according to a 2013 study published, in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, bottlenose dolphins each have their own special whistles, which are just like human names. Um, so yeah, bottlenose dolphins develop their own unique identity signal, the signature whistle. And this whistle encodes individual identity independently of voice features. So they wow. just whistle at each other and they're like, oh yeah, that's Jeff. That's how it goes. <laughs> Jeff the dolphin. They're just like, Whoosh. I can't whistle, otherwise I would, but I'm going to try. I can't whistle either. I can't whistle. But basically, dolphins do that, and they're like, yo, what's up, Jermaine? What's up, Jeffrey? I don't know why all all my J names, (laughs) Josh, Jeremy, Jedediah, Jebediah. Jamie. Jamie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now I feel bad. It took me so long to get to Jamie. I didn't even get there. Um, That's actually really interesting. I want to know. I want to. I, I will. I've always wanted to be able to do a dolphin sound, but I can't. I'm not going to attempt it either. Can you? <laughs> nope. That's a no. I went for it and I tried and it was a no. Everyone, election day is tomorrow. Election day. The elections are happening tomorrow, which means that if you haven't already, it's time to vote. And if you're struggling with knowing how to vote or whether or not you're registered or needing information on the candidates, all that stuff is available at votelikeabeast.com. Um, you know, you've probably heard us talk about it before, but votelikeabeast.com is a great just reference tool. 
um, to help you check your voter registration and see how to vote and, and get general information and stuff on all elections going on near you that you can vote in. Um, voting's super important. There's a lot of really important elections happening. And so if you haven't already, please go check out VoteLikeABeast.com and get out there and vote because it's good and you should do it. Voting is good. That was that was nice, Jamie. That was a nice little 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 period at the end of my long and elaborate sentence. Thank you for listening to Trevor Talks Too Much, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did today. <laughs> Not that I don't enjoy it normally, but this was just extra fun. Um, and yeah, check us out every Tuesday. We got new episodes coming out. All the audio platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff. Video versions dropping the following Monday over on YouTube.com. So Trevor Talks Too Much. And leave a review, comment, DM me or whatever. I don't know. Apparently I told people to DM me in an episode or something. And then I got a DM from someone and, and they were just like, you're beautiful. And I was like, that's nice. I was like, thank you. And then <laughs> I was like, oh, I think I told people to do that. So it didn't feel like it then. <laughs> But uh, no, seriously, leave a review, comment, whatever. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know what you want to see more of. Um, and yeah, follow us on all the stuff. Follow me, follow Mythical, follow Mythical Pods. You know the drill, everyone. You know the drill. And as always, stay safe out there and have a lovely, beautiful, um, super fun week. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>